Pentecost, when we remember the birth of the church, it's happy birthday church. There are flames, but not candles. It's the flame of the Holy Spirit burning in the disciples, in the apostles' hearts as they're set on fire with the love of God and equipped to go and carry on Jesus's ministry here on earth. It's a day rich in symbolism. Red is the liturgical color, the color that we would wear robes of and we would deck our churches in. It's the end of the Easter season, the beginning of another. It's also when we remember the Holy Spirit with the symbol of the dove, uh, the dove of peace, the dove which descended on Jesus at his baptism. It's also a time when we remember God's people, ourselves, and celebrate one another. Can you see all these handprints in flame colours for the Holy Spirit? But it's also when we remember that God is alive in the world, the rushing wind of the Holy Spirit whooshing through the world. We've already seen a visual aid for that at the beginning of our service that members of our church, our younger members, made to help us with our worship today. So let us be still as we acknowledge God's presence and gather in worship. Let us recognise God's presence with us wherever we are. As God's people, we gather in heart and mind. Let us worship God together. We worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us recall our Lord's blessing upon those who follow him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And so we come to God as one from whom no secrets are hidden, to ask God's forgiveness and peace. Father, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us. Bring us back to yourself as those who were once dead, but now have life through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God deliver us from the powers of darkness, restore in us the image of his glory, and lead us in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen.
God who at this time taught the heart of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through the merits of Christ Jesus our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Therefore I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one of the manifestations of the Spirit is given for the common good, to one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, and to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different tongues and to another still, an interpretation of tongues. All of these are the works of one of the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one, just as he determines. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all of its parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. taken from Acts 2, verses 1 to 21. 
Coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues, as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with each other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Then they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we hear each in our own language in which we were born? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya adjoining Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them speaking in our own tongues, the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, whatever could this mean? Others mocking said, they are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it's only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapour of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you noticed that it's often hard to understand some things no matter how well someone has described it to you or even if you witness it yourself? Some things only make sense really once you've seen the bigger picture and that often happens much later. Sometimes difficult to understand what's going on while you're living through it. I think we're probably in one of those times actually as well. We'll look back on these times in a couple of years and see things differently. Jesus actually told the disciples that there were some things they weren't going to understand. They just wouldn't get while he was still around, while he was still with them. They needed to be living in the age of the Holy Spirit, for it all to make sense. The work of the Holy Spirit involves a new way of understanding Jesus. Not simply to say farewell to his earthly ministry and teaching, but to inspire the church to continue it, to continue to embody the incarnation. Just as Jesus was called Emmanuel, which means God with us. We have to continue to be God with us to the world around us. You see, our faith is not simply one of following a teacher. And the work of Jesus didn't end at his ascension into heaven. Right, lesson's over. I'm off. Remember the teaching? That wasn't what Jesus said at all. That's not how things were left. No. The ministry of Jesus continues today. 
it unfolds as the Holy Spirit continues to guide us into all truth in each new generation, in each culture, upon earth. Because that is what Jesus promised would happen after he ascended into heaven and the Holy Spirit came to abide with us forever and to lead us into all truth. So what does it mean then to be filled with the Holy Spirit? We might well read the passage in Acts and think, well, sounds fantastic, but that's not my experience of church or of faith. What do we need then to take from what the apostles experienced at Pentecost? Well, here's an idea. We read of the Holy Spirit being poured out and the good news being told in the languages of all who were present. Today, people have a very different vocabulary of spirituality, of meaning, of culture, and of understanding of the world than the world of 2,000 years ago and the Middle East. Our Pentecost vision, then, should be to invite the Holy Spirit into our hearts now, here, to enable us to speak in language and culture which people understand. Not to change the gospel, the good news remains the same, or to express it in a way which falls in with our culture lock, stock and barrel, uncritically but to tell God's story afresh in our own generation, in our own community. Well, we've had to do things a little bit differently of late in any case, haven't we? And that should give us pause for thought on these lines. My preaching currently happens online, not in the flesh. And the way I plan, write and deliver sermons has changed. Our services are different, aren't they? They're shorter. They still follow a liturgical structure, but it's different. We're varied in the voices and locations we hear and see in these services, and in the music and the visuals we use. But it's not just preachers and those who are involved in the putting together of our service which this affects. It's all of us, every one of us, who follow Christ is having to work out how to do what we're called to do differently. Life is different, so our work as Christians must be different. So ask God, what is my work now? Ask the Holy Spirit to empower you for that work now. Because our calling is the same as it ever was. We're called to let God use us by the power of the Holy Spirit by simply putting our whole selves at God's disposal. Those of you who've been through the centre of Boston Spa this past week or so might have noticed our Pentecost bunting in Millennium Square. This is a visible reminder of the power of God's love active in the world. And that's what Pentecost is all about. God's love isn't locked up in a church building, never was. God's love is on the loose. We're called to take the message of the power of God's love out to others, to unleash the power of God's love in the heart of our world, in the heart of our community, in the heart of our homes. A French Jesuit priest, Father Pierre de Chardin, wrote... If human beings ever harness the energies of love, then for the second time in history we will have discovered fire. That is the promise of the Holy Spirit. That is the promise of Pentecost. The fire of the Spirit. The fire of God's love burning in our hearts, burning in the world. In all languages, in all cultures, in all times and in all places. So this Pentecost, I invite you to join me in inviting the Holy Spirit to inspire us, each one of us, to give us a new language, 
of saying, come Holy Spirit. Because if the Holy Spirit is not on fire within our hearts, we're wasting our time. We're doing things in our own strength, not in God's. And those flames of love won't be fanned into the world and we won't be fulfilling our calling to continue God's mission on earth. Jesus ascended into heaven to make space for us in the power of the Holy Spirit to carry on the project, to carry on fulfilling the will of the Father, to carry on that mission of things being on earth as they are in heaven. May we then be renewed in faith, in love and in the Spirit, in the name of Christ. Amen. As we are separated in our own homes during this time, may we remember that we are all together joined in Christ. As we spend this quiet time in prayer, imagine we are holding hands with one another, united together. Let us pray. Dear Lord, as we come together before you now, May we feel your presence in our minds and in our hearts. Take us, break us, mould us and fill us with the fire of your love. May we experience the power of your spirit among us as we draw nearer to you. Heighten our senses that we may be more perceptive to you. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously, graciously hear, hear us. On this day of Pentecost, give us faith, Lord, so that when you come like the wind, we may sense your movement and hear you call upon us. Give us courage, Lord, so that when you come to us in tongues of fire, we may not fear. Take all that is undeserving, impure and sinful from us. Burn them from our lives. May your love ablaze within us. Give us an open heart, Lord, that we might seek all people for your kingdom 
and proclaim the good news without limits to the world. Come, Holy Spirit, we wait for you. Come wind, come fire, come truth, come love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord God, we entrust to you the families and communities communities affected by coronavirus, wherever they may be, both here and throughout the world. We pray for all health workers and carers, reassuring the anxious and vulnerable, working to heal and restore the sick, comforting the concerned and the bereaved. We bring before you now those known to us who suffer in body, mind or spirit and for those on the St Mary's email prayer list. Let us take a moment of quiet to hold them up to you. Healing God, be their guide, strength and hope. For those who are bereaved and grieving, we ask for your comfort, Lord, especially for those who mourn alone without a hug or a hand to hold. We pray for all those who work, whose work is involved with caring for the deceased and for bereavement counsellors. We also bring before you all those who work in hospices and especially St Martin's House. Comforting God, be there in times of darkness. We pray for government leaders throughout the world and for careful decision making to protect the poor, vulnerable and elderly. May these extraordinary times lead to deep and necessary changes in how our world works and to address the profound injustices. Living God, bring guidance, justice and peace to the world. In these times of job losses and business closures, we pray for a hope for of a better future. For young people leaving schools or further education, we pray for opportunities. For teachers, lecturers and educators, we pray for guidance and a way forward. For children and teenagers, we pray for assurance and adaption to changes. For parents, we give thanks for homeschooling and nurturing. Merciful God, protect our children and young people. In these times of isolation, being apart from loved ones and distant from friends, thank you that there is nothing in all of creation that can separate us from your love. And may your love that never fails continue to be shared through the kindness of strangers, looking out for each other, for neighbours near and far, all recognising our shared vulnerability. Loving God, bind us together. We pray for the church as we now know it, for our homes that have become our worship places. We give thanks for Nick and Trish as they provide our online services and for all who contribute to our worship, bringing us all together. We pray for the church and its leaders in this country and throughout the world. As Pentecost was the equipping of the apostles to go out into the world, may we follow in their footsteps to be your disciples. Holy Spirit, send us out with flame of your love. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord graciously, graciously hear us. us. Instill in our shaken souls the belief and hope that all things are possible with your creative love. For strangers to become friends, for science to source solutions, for resources to be generously shared, so that everyone everywhere may have what they need May your perfect love that knows no borders cast out any fear and selfishness that divides. May your love that never ends be our comfort, 
strength and guide for the well-being of all and the glory of God. Amen. Merciful Merciful Father, accept accept these these prayers prayers for the the sake sake of of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord is always with us. Peace be with us all. Let us indeed be at peace one with another as we offer ourselves to God in worship. As we recall our Creator God's lavish love for the world, revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, and as we invite the Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth, to draw us closer to God, to equip us 
to do the Lord's work and to inspire us to love as God loves us. The Lord our God is always with us. God, your Spirit is ever among us. Let us celebrate God's goodness. Lord, we lift our hearts to you. Let us offer thanks and praise to God. Father, your face is turned towards your world. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth, for by the breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. Your love is revealed in all creation. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose the path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Your love is revealed afresh in every age. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. Again and again we chose the path of rebellion, fell short of your glory and failed to be a holy people. Yet you still would not abandon us. Your love is revealed to the undeserving. Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendour and light. Yet in the coming of your Son you reveal the power of your love, made perfect in our human weakness. Your love is revealed living among us. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us. Dying for his own, he set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Your love is revealed in Christ's devotion. We proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb, and his glorious ascension to reign at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. God, our Creator, your love is revealed in Jesus Christ, your Son, who died, is risen, and will come again. Glory to God, whose love has been revealed. Glory to God, whose love has set us free. Look with favour on your people, and in your mercy hear the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free, and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Lord God, revealed in creation. Lord God, revealed in Jesus Christ. Lord God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us. We will rejoice in you. We pray to the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, whom Jesus asked the Father to send, that we might be guided into all truth. Veni Sancti Spiritus. Vem Espirito Santo. Come, Heiliger Geist. Ven Espiritu Santo. Come, Holy Spirit. Veni Sancti Spiritus. Vian Sant Esprit. Come, Holy Spirit. Uniting our prayers with the worldwide church throughout the ages, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May we trust in God to provide all that is sufficient for each day. May we be delivered from sin and live lives which honour and reflect the holiness of our Heavenly Father. May we live on earth as citizens of heaven, as God's forgiven and forgiving people, and seek the coming of God's eternal kingdom through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, this is where we get sent out in the power of the Holy Spirit to get on with the job, to spread those flames of love in the world. So we're going to have a slightly different blessing today. I'll let Becky explain. Hiya, my name's Becky George. Welcome to our Makaton UK blessing. Lord turn his face toward 